Hi, my name is Dan Slow from the senior pastor at Crosswalk Church in Phoenix, Arizona, and I'd like to welcome you to our message. Uh, it's Bright Future is the name of it, and we are in a lesson today called the new life and seeing how God has given us a new life which gives us this bright future. As we begin today, maybe kind of get this picture in your mind. I have a couple different ones. One of them is of a witness protection program. And so when I think of that, I think of maybe someone who's involved with the mob in some way and, and they decide that they're going to testify. So they, they need the witness relocation. So they, they need to be taken from their old way of life and then brought to a different place, given a new identity. Or maybe a second one that you might be able to relate to, I know I can, is, is somebody who moves from one place to another. And, and they say, you know what, I'm, I'm going to move from where I was and I want to start over. I want to start new somewhere else. So they maybe move across the country or, or move to a new city or something like that. Well, today as we, we look into God's word, we are going to see how God frees us from an old way of life. I think one that all of us will, will want to get away from. Uh, our past, our sins, our hurts, our heartaches, our guilt, our shame, all of those things. And how God gets us out of the tentacles of a life like that. Because it, it seems sometimes they can try to pull us back in. And how he helps us to have a new life, how he gives us that new life, the new identity, and lets us really each day start over. We are going to Romans chapter 6, and all of our readings will be from there today. And, and we start with Romans 6 verses 1 and 2. And this is what Paul writes. What shall we say then? Shall we go on sinning so that grace may increase? By no means. We are those who have died to sin how can we live in it any longer? And so when you hear this, in previous chapters, Paul had said where sin increases, grace increases all the more. And so what he was saying is no matter what type of history, no matter uh, what our past is, no matter what those sins of the past look like, the blood of Jesus covers them, that God's grace is greater than our sin. And what he's doing here is saying you know, some of you might be thinking, well, then I can do whatever I want because if I sin more, that gives God the opportunity to be even more gracious. And he's, and he's saying no. That, that way of life, uh, of living in sin and just following that, it, it's a dead end. And so it would be like someone who was in the witness protection program, who was given a new identity, went somewhere else, and then got caught up in the mob again. You'd be like, why are you doing that? You're trying to get away from that. Or maybe someone who moved from one town to another and they started doing the same things they did that they tried to get away from. You would say that makes no sense. And that's what Paul is telling us too, is that as we look at our new life, part of this is going to be leaving the old life behind. He goes on to say this, or don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ were baptized into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that, just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. And when you hear that, he, he brings up baptism, a very important part of the Christian faith, uh, where, where God gives us his name, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit with water. Uh, it's a, an adoption into his family. It's also a washing away of sin. And very often we think about baptism as a one-time act, that it happens and then, you know, it's, it's over, I'm, I'm baptized. And what Paul is saying, and, and important for us to remember, is that every time we remember our baptism, we can do that every day. We go through this process that, that as I remember my baptism, it's a burial. As I remember my baptism, it's a burial of my sin, and it's a birth at the same time. It's a burial of my sin and a birth of the new life. In 1 Peter uh, chapter 3, Peter describes baptism 
And he uses an illustration that might be a little surprising. He, he uses the illustration of Noah's ark. And, and what he's saying is the water was both a destroying water and a life-giving water. And, and what he was saying is that in the flood, Noah's flood, the water came down and, and everyone outside of the ark was, was killed, was drowned by that water. And yet that same water was the water that lifted up the ark that Noah and his family were in. And Peter is saying that water is just like baptism. That the, the water that God uses in our lives with his word both destroys and, and, and puts to death this sin inside of us and raises up a new person of faith inside of us at the same time. And the encouragement is to, to live this out and enjoy this every day. And as we do this, it's also this participation. Notice it says that we were right there. We're, we were buried with him in baptism. And, and what does God want through this? What is on the other side of this, this death and burial and then also this birth of a new life? Our new life. That, that that old life is left behind and now we have something new to live for. He goes on, verses 5 through 7, and, and really carries this theme even farther. He says, For with, if we have been united with him, with Jesus, in a death like this, we will certainly also be united with him in a resurrection like his. For we know that our old self was crucified with him, so that the body ruled by sin might be done away with, and we should no longer be slaves to sin. No longer be slaves to sin, because anyone who has died has been set free from sin. His wording here is strong, and I'll be honest, it, it's a little surprising to me when I, I read it and, and reread it that, that it made me think of this maybe in a way I hadn't before or a way I've forgotten, and that is this that our old self was crucified with him. And so when you think of Jesus on the cross, and a lot of times we think of that uh, in the spring, we think of Good Friday, Jesus on the cross, that when we see Jesus on the cross, that he's saying there's a part of yourself that you need to see on the cross. And, and what he's talking about is Jesus is on the cross, but what is there with him? Our sins that he's carrying the load of our sins. And, and as those sins go to the cross, just like Jesus died, those sins need to die. That sinful way of life, sinful way of thinking, uh, who we used to be, the old way, needs to be gone. It, it's, it's not helpful, it's destructive, it's harmful that we see it as that way. And then also that we have this opportunity to have a new life. So. He goes on a little bit to say, we are no longer slaves. And it makes me think of the song, we are no longer slaves to sin. I am a child of God. And I, I believe that song it is, reflects these verses purposefully. No longer slaves. And why am I no longer a slave? Not because of my effort. Not Living new doesn't mean trying harder. Living new means recognizing that my sin was taken on the cross by Jesus. And because he has forgiven me, I have this opportunity to live a new life. And now the way practically we look at this, we can look back at the past at what Jesus has done. We can even look to the future one day when we die and our body of sin will be put in the ground and, and we will be done with sin. But really right now is when God wants us to enjoy the new life. And the way that we do this, the way that we crucify our sinful nature and, and rise again each day is when we remember our baptism and we do that as we confess our sin and turn to Jesus for forgiveness. And so please take time to do that. Even right now, if you need to just hit pause for a little bit and take a time of repentance, praying, Dear Lord, please forgive me for my sin, for my past way of life, for, for those changes that still follow me into my new life. It, and that's why it needs to be a daily thing that we do, is because the sin is relentless. It, it continues to follow us and it continues to plague us. 
And so by confessing our sin and then turning to Jesus, that Jesus is the power to battle that because he has won the victory for us already. And so just taking time in your day, the start of your day, the middle of your day, the end of the day, whenever you want to do it, but set up a margin where, where you can do this, that, that you can look at the sin in your life and say, I am not a slave to you. One final thought when I think of what a slave is, and this is the way I think, is that you have a master or you are a slave if you can't say no. That's my definition of the slave, is that, that if I have to do whatever you tell me to do, I have now become your slave. But God gives us the ability to, to the sin to say no to it. And so if you do have a, a habit or a hurt that has followed you or a behavior, listen to this clearly. You can say no. And the way that you do that, again, is every day as you identify it as wrong, that you confess it to God and turn to him for forgiveness. This might not be a one-time deal. This might be something that you have to do for the rest of your life, saying no to this and escaping this slavery. But God promises us that that's exactly what we can do. He goes on. Now, if we died with Christ which we've done, right? He's already said, if we die, when we die with Christ, that's our baptism as we're confessing our sin. Now, if we died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. And now do you see how that changed from the old destructive way of life, which has to stop. Now he's given us something to live for, that we're also going to rise with him. For we know that since Christ was raised from the dead, he cannot die again. Death no longer has mastery over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. And just two little parts in there that I, that I want to make sure you hear is that, first of all, that he died to sin once for all. That, that the payment that Jesus made was once it was a one-time, full payment made by Christ for all, for me, for you, for the sins of all people. And so if there's a part of you that wonders, am I included in this? Is, this? is this really something because of the sin I struggle with? Am I included in this? He says, yeah, you're absolutely included in this. And, and now it's this change that he, it says, the life he lives, he lives to God in the direction towards God. And, and as you think about that, as I think about that, try to, to answer the question, what is it I live towards? What direction am I facing in my life? Am I still living facing sin, uh, sin facing and, and being distracted by it and, and maybe lured into it? Or am I living a life in which I'm directed towards God? towards God and his promises and his word. I don't know how many times in ministry I have encouraged individuals to please, 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 please read their Bibles. And I know sometimes it's hard because it, sometimes you don't understand what it, it says. And so there might be a need for a commentary or something like that. I understand it. And at the same time, Live in a direction facing God. And, and you do that as you listen to a message like this. Right now, you're facing God. You're, you're hearing his word. That's God-facing life. That you do that as you're involved in, in a church home and a church ministry as well. When you're with other believers, the, the bride of Christ, the body of Christ. All of those are God-facing where you're saying, Lord, I, I'm, I have my focus on you and that is where I want to go. It, it's a very uh, early thing that you teach kids, if you've ever had to teach kids to drive a car. And one of the things that you teach them very early, whether it's a car or a motorcycle, where you look is where you tend to go. And so what happens is that if I'm turning off to the side while I'm driving, I take the wheel with me. 
uh, that, that if I'm looking at something that I want to avoid, I have a tendency of, st of steering right into it. And that is why he's encouraging us one last time of saying it this way, live your life towards God, facing him. Because when you're facing that, that is where we have the tendency to have our focus and attention and where our life goes. The last words, uh, Romans 8, 11 to 14. In the same way, count yourselves dead to sin, just like Jesus did. Count yourself dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body. Your body is not a place where sin gets to do whatever it wants with its appetites and desires. You're not a slave to that anymore. You're not a slave to sin. And as a result, don't let it be your master and don't let it rule your body either. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body so that you obey its evil desires. Do not offer any part of yourself to sin as an instrument of wickedness, but rather offer yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life and offer every part of yourself to him as an instrument of righteousness. Do you see the, the difference between those two? That as you look at yourself the old way, the old life, the destructive way, instrument of wickedness, I was involved in, in things that just brought hurt and harm. And, and that's gone. And, and Jesus has done away with it. And now we have this opportunity. What living new means is that I'm an instrument of righteousness. And that's what brings a bright future. No longer instrument of wickedness, an instrument of righteousness. For sin shall no longer be your master. One more time he says it. Notice how he's repeating himself just so you believe him. Uh, sin is not your master because you are not under the law, but you are under grace. And my prayer for you, my prayer for me even, is that I begin to understand every day more and more what it means to live under grace to be guided by God's undeserved love. To every day as I, I, I get up and, and I look in the mirror, that, that I can say those words, I'm no longer a slave to sin. I'm a child of God. I'm an instrument of, of righteousness. I'm an instrument of doing what is good. That as I look at the, the problems that are in this world, and there are many, that the answer to the many of those problems is going to come through me because God has given me a new life. He's given me an understanding of him. He's given me forgiveness. And, and he's given all of this to me to live out and to share. Living under grace. Living under grace gives you and it gives me not only a new life, but a bright future. Just the final thing I want to share here today is, is a crosswalk vision. Our vision at Crosswalk Crosswalk Church is a community where all may come to know the grace of God and strive to live new and to share the love of Jesus. And in these words, in this text, and, and if you didn't listen to last week's, do that too, where, where we come to know the grace of God and strive to live new. Striving to live new does not mean I'm going to try harder and it's all on me. Striving to live new means keeping my focus and living towards God. Every day enjoying that grace and, and, and understanding that, that yeah, my, my conduct is going to change, my actions are going to change, but what God changes first and foremost with his grace is my heart. And he changes that with his, his kindness and his love. And it makes him the, the master that I want to follow because I want to be an instrument of righteousness and love and help and worship and praise to him and, and showing love and assistance and care to others. Let's pray. Dear Lord God, uh, we thank you that you have taken us out of an old destructive way of life and have taught us what it means to live new. Help us on a daily basis to put to death the sin that still lurks around in our hearts and in our lives 
and to remember your grace and your love shown to us in Jesus Christ. Help us every day to face you, uh, to, to live towards you, to, to be drawn closer to you, uh, and, and live new so that we can enjoy the bright future that you have in mind for us. Now as you go today, go with the Lord's blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you his peace. Amen.